Luke's English Podcast is sponsored by italki, which is a fantastic solution if you're looking for a one-to-one teacher to help you improve your spoken English, uh, maybe your pronunciation, your grammar, or to prepare you for specific things like job interview situations or exams. Uh, there are loads and loads of one-to-one teachers available on italki. They come from lots of different countries, uh, you know, including the UK, Ireland, America, Canada, Australia, and all sorts of places like that. And um, you can just sort of like search for teachers that specialize in certain things. It's extremely professionally done and very easy to book time with uh, someone online these days. And when you do uh, find someone and you buy some talking time, italki will then send you a voucher for a free lesson because you listen to this podcast. To get that offer, go to teacherluke.co.uk slash talk or click an italki logo on my website. And just before we go to the jingle, here's another reminder for any Lepsters in London. There is a London Lepster meetup happening on Saturday. That's this Saturday, the 28th of September 2019 at the Fitzroy Tavern, 16 Charlotte Street, Fitzrovia, London, W1T2LY uh, at 6 p.m. That's the London Lepster meeting, uh, 6 p.m. Saturday at the Fitzroy Tavern in London, Go down there, have fun, play games, uh, chat and meet and make friends with some like-minded, nice people, and that would be good. Okay, good. Now, right, so here's the jingle starting right now. You're listening to Luke's English Podcast. For more information, visit teacherluke.co.uk. Hello, dear listeners. How are you today? I hope you're doing really, really, really well. Here's an episode with Paul all about the subject of advertising and sales with a bit of marketing thrown in there too. This is a language-focused episode looking at words and phrases that you often see and hear in advertising and sales situations. It also includes discussion of sales techniques Apple's sales and marketing strategy, and also a classic bit of stand-up by the late, great George Carlin. The episode starts with a discussion between Paul and me about Paul's experiences of working in sales jobs at Apple, including selling their products to customers on the shop floor, and how Apple markets its products to people. Then we go through a big list of words and phrases relating to sales situations in various ways, including the typical things you might read on packaging, advertising, or sales material. The list is pretty long, but it all leads up to the comedy sketch at the end, which includes all the phrases. That comedy bit, by the way, does contain some very rude language. So there's a heads up if that's not your cup of tea. So get your vocabulary learning hat on for this episode. And also, let's get stuck into the topic of sales and advertising with Paul. Okay then, Paul. What, mate? Welcome back. Yeah. So, I thought for this one what we'd do is talk about a certain topic. Okay. Okay. And uh, I've got some words and phrases that relate to the topic that we can go through. And then there's a little um, stand-up bit by George Carlin. Nice. At the end as well. All right. Right. So the topic is sales and advertising. <laughs> Random. <Okay>. Yeah. <laughs> is that what you're thinking? Yeah. Random choice. Um, sales and advertising. Mm. So we're talking about things like selling, right? And advertising. And advertising stuff. <laughs> <laughs> the, the we're talking about selling things. So I thought, first of all, we talk about sales, talk about advertising, marketing, stuff like that. Yes. And then we'll go into all these phrases and then we'll check out this uh, bit of stand-up. All right. So um, have you ever worked in sales? Have you ever worked in yeah. a sales job? Yeah. Uh, and marketing. Well, in the sense that I work for Apple. Uh, yeah. If, if long, long-term listeners what did you, of the podcast. What did you actually do? Uh, multiple things. I started off as a salesperson in the store. Uh, then I did more customer service stuff in mm-hmm. the store. Mm-hmm. Then I became uh, a trainer. I would teach people, teach customers how to use the stuff. Teach the customers? Store. Yeah, I would teach customers how to use okay. their iPhones, iPads, yeah. Macs, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And then I moved into training the employees. So I would then teach the employees how to do the stuff that I'd done. Teach the employees how to teach the, the, the customers. Correct. Then I, uh, then it just became like this un, 
unending ladder of then I became the trainer of the trainers who trained uh, the, the, the it was like Inception but at Apple. training yeah exactly uh, so uh, yes I, that's to answer the question I was a salesperson. they call them specialists uh, at Apple so that's that's sort of in the early days. You were there on the shop floor, exactly, meeting customers. Yeah. Did you used to say, "Can I help you at all?" Yeah. Did you? Yeah. And, and they used to all say, "Fuck off! Just looking." I'm just looking. Is I'm the, just looking. Is the answer to yeah. that question in England anyway? Yeah. I see. Whereas but, in America, they're like, "Oh my god, yes." Really? Um, yeah. People in England, we hate interactions with other humans. Mm-hmm. So, can I help you at all? No, I'm just looking. Yeah. Thanks. And even before, even it, it got so. It was so funny that I'd be like, um, I would just say hello there. Hello there. And they'd go, no, thanks. <laughs> and I'd be like, I'm not, no, I was just, hi, how are you? Yeah. No, thanks. <laughs> right, they're, so, right. they're so used to, in England, we're so used to, to, to salespeople in shops coming up and being like, can I help you with anything? That yeah. when you change, that we're so automatic, it's like a Pavlovian thing where we just go, no, I'm, I'm just looking, thanks. Hello no, there, thanks. I'm just looking, thanks. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so, uh, so you were on the shop floor with the customers. Yeah. Were you encouraged at Apple to actually sort of push for a sale in not, those situations? N- no, not really. There was not. There wasn't a culture of upselling, uh, which it, there there are in some companies. There were there were certain things, and I I don't even really know why. Honestly, there were certain things that that were encouraged, like uh, or that we, we had to talk about um, when we when we were selling a Mac, for example. Uh, we would always uh, mention Apple Care, which is like the extended uh, warranty that Apple does. Uh, there were three things at the at the time. Uh, this is why this is this is going to date stuff. There was a th- so there was Apple Care, which still exists. There was a thing called One to One, which was uh, where you it's just, it was a membership to the store where you come in. Uh, I think it would cost a hundred euros or ninety nine pounds or ninety nine euros or ninety nine. dollars. always ninety nine, never a yeah, hundred. Exactly. And you would basically pay 99 whatever it was a, a year and you could come into the store and learn how to use your, your stuff. Your stuff. Yeah. Uh, so that was another thing that we, we were encouraged to offer or to speak about. Okay. And the third thing at the time was a thing called Dot .Mac, uh, which is now iCloud, which is free. But at the time it was a thing you had to pay for uh, and it had different services. So there was there were three sort of things that uh, – and they were they were – um, uh, we used to call them attachments yeah. and they were things that you would get at the end of the year or whatever and you did your r- annual review you'd kind of get measured on so just give me an example of how you would actually talk about those what did you call them? attachments attachments they're like things in a, on top in a sale situation so I'm like hello uh, so you come up to me and say hello can I help you? yeah and I say, yeah. I'm, and I'm, often the thing was like, yeah. What's better? Why is this better than a? What, what's the difference between this and a PC? That was a classic question. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so what's the? So I'm, I'm, I'd like to buy a new laptop. Yeah. What's the difference between this MacBook and a just a normal PC? That shit. Go to Samsung. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd, 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 I'd go through like the reasons why I bought a Mac, um, which were legitimate reasons because like six months prior to doing that, I bought my first Mac and I loved it so much. I was like, great, part time job talking about stuff the thing that i really like easy um so yeah i i I'd just walk through i'd basically go through the things that blew my mind initially when when i was like you know if you want to do this uh one of the things i'd always show there was a suggested like two minute thing that we take them through like a two minute ride or whatever mm-hmm. that would take them through how easy it was to drag and drop photos into a word document which you couldn't right. do on pcs at the time right um the like the expose thing where you now you four finger swipe up on yeah. a trackpad to see all the different windows all open and you could choose that. And that now is, is bog is, standard, is bog standard. But back in the day, like PCs didn't do that. Mm. There was a whole antivirus thing of like, you don't need an antivirus cause you don't yeah. get viruses on Macs, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, Okay. And then uh, for the add-on sort of thing, uh, you'd ask open-ended questions like, "Oh, you know, I- do it, do it with me now." So, okay, I'd like to buy this this Mac. Then, oh, big decision, but I think you've convinced me. Yeah, especially that thing where I could see all the windows open at the same time. Yeah, it's definitely cool. worth an extra five hundred pounds. Yeah, it's cool, right? Um, really cool. So, okay, so I, I'd like I, to take it then, please. Yeah, and do you mind if I ask you some more questions? You know, to to to, to better understand. <sighs> do you have to? Yeah, go on then. Go on. Have you thought about how um, how to protect uh, your, your your Mac? Yeah, um, I'll just fight anyone who ta- tries to take it. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Well, well you, no, you, I haven't actually. Like I was, you know, but um, 
But I mean, like, yeah, do I need to get like virus, antivirus software? You don't need any it? antivirus stuff. Uh, because this is a, this is a Mac. Because this is a Mac, as, as we've just talked about. Yeah. It, it, I, I, there's nothing really going to happen with the software. You're fine with the, with the antivirus okay. stuff. Uh, it's more uh, in terms of the hardware. Uh, it comes with a standard one year warranty. Uh, so if anything goes wrong, you can come back to the store. We've got a service area called the Genius Bar where you can come and speak to people, actual mm. real people, not just send it off. Are they actual geniuses? They're actual geniuses. Are they're they, amazing. Their IQ level. <sighs> Their has IQ, been mate, they've been checked. They went to Cambridge. They did all of the things. Amazing. They studied Apple Macs exactly. at Cambridge. Geniuses. Did a master's degree in, exactly. in the MacBook Pro. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, and they they fix your they fix your stuff basically. Uh, okay. So that's you, you that's get standard that standard for a year. Okay. Um, then uh, you, there's a, we've got a thing called Apple Care, which is an extended version of that mm-hmm. essentially. Which uh, whatever it, it's two hundred and fifty uh, uh, pounds. Uh, on top of the the price, but it's a small price to pay for peace of mind, isn't it, Paul? Yeah, basically. I mean, if you look at it in the way that, like, you know, if you divide it up by the amount of days, you know, for for three years, you're spending about two pounds a day, mm-hmm. uh, or even less than that. So it's like the equivalent of buying a coffee. And uh, if you spill that coffee on your Mac, uh, well, then, then, then you're fucked. Well, no, because you've, you've it's not accidental you're... damage. It, oh, uh, it, it covers like oh, if, really? if, if it's our fault, we fix it for free. Uh, oh. If it's your fault, then well, we fix it, be, but, but you should have to pay for it. It's not going to be your fault, though, is it? Because, I mean, Macs are designed not to go wrong. Oh, they are designed not to go wrong, but sometimes they do. Because that's, you know, they're made right. in a factory, and mm. so sometimes uh, the, the components... But, you know, the, it, it, it doesn't happen, but I'll, it's just... I'll think about it. All right. I'll think about it. But I'll You've definitely... got 30 days to make up to... to... Oh, is it 30 days? Yeah. Or it's six months. I can't remember what the time was, okay. but you've got a certain amount of time to subscribe right. to it. Do you feel like uh, selling uh, Apple products was sort of different to selling other products uh i don't know if it was different it depends on on uh, think it was easier well it was easy for me because i enjoyed using the stuff so it was very easy for me to talk about and sell stuff that i use myself yeah if okay. I, I, at the time i would have never i wouldn't have been able to like work at windows or anything because i hated using PC, my pc okay. uh, I, i've always hated using pcs uh, or Windows, the operating system, and also PCs in general, just because they never worked. I had all, there was always, it, I always had like towers that you'd buy, and then like, the graphics card wasn't good enough for yeah. the games I wanted yeah. to play, or the, it was just nothing ever Me worked. Too. It was a problem. Just installing, it's it like yeah. antivirus, Norton antivirus, McAfee, whatever the thing it yeah. was. Ooh, it would just drive me nuts. And honestly, like, I, I, I got a Mac, and within six months, I was like, why, how have I not known about this yeah. before? These days, obviously, you can, if you're clever, you can build your own PC, and it, they're amazing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, well, building your, it, it, if you want performance, really, and yeah. uh, less price, building your PC is definitely the thing that you want to do. Yeah. The, it, it, the only advantage, really, is that Apple make the hardware and they make the software, so they know how the software, uh, they know how to optimize the software. Yeah, that to that, the to the hardware. That might, Whereas I, that, I think it's our that, streams that, across. The microphone is crackling again. You need to try yeah. and put it on the table to make sure it doesn't drape yeah. down or dangle down. Yeah. Oops. Oh, good work. Just drop my phone on the floor. And drape Kevin. your phone down. Yeah. Uh, so okay. yeah. All right. But going back to sales and advertising, yeah. right? In your experience of mm. selling stuff, yeah. Did you find specific techniques that worked when you're training those those people? Yeah. What are you training them to do? I mean, are there special techniques or? Uh, no, that, it, it wasn't really techniques. I don't oh, know what's oh. going on? I tell you what. I tell you what. Hold on. I'll pause the podcast. Okay. Unpaused. Trying to just prevent Paul's microphone from. Uh, making crackling noises. So anyway, specific. Uh, yeah, no techniques. Uh, it, the the training that we had that I received when I joined the company, and it was always the same training that we would deliver afterwards to the employees, was j- like be yourself and have a conversation with somebody. Don't like don't force. The, it wasn't about it wasn't about selling. It was about just mm. informing people. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I know, and I know that for a fact is is different to other companies uh, because when we used to hire people, I mean that was my first job in retail, so I didn't have anything to compare it to. But then when we I, I started delivering training sessions to other people who'd worked in other retailers, mm-hmm. uh, it was very different. Yeah. Okay. It was more about who you are as a person rather than your knowledge of the product. Right. I see. Uh, and it was uh, more about. Um, getting them in the right solution. It was almost, it, I mean, it would, a typical thing would be like a, a granny would come in uh, and want like a 17-inch MacBook Pro specced out, fully loaded. And in most other retailers would be like, oh, they'd be rubbing their hands. They'd be like, oh, you should get this and get this and get this. Whereas for us, it was more like, cool, like, can I ask you some questions about why you want to 
mm-hmm. why you and- why you want that specific product and then she'd be like oh because my grandson told me to get this one and we're like great and so what kind of things are you going to be doing on it oh emails internet great right. have, you, have you have you seen the other macbooks that we have that are about half yeah. the price yeah. that you don't need a macbook pro to be do to be going on the internet and then often downselling because I think Apple's philosophy was like if you be honest with people and if you if you downsell them in the sense that you give them what you want what they what need they want, yeah. what they need yeah then they come back more often mm-hmm. as repeat customers it's right. it, on the day you earn less money but on the, in the long term you 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 reap the benefits because people are like, oh, that guy in the Apple store, like he wasn't like the guy in PC world that was trying to ram everything down my throat. The the virus that's 30 euros, the extension of the warranty, this, right. that, and the other. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, you go in with them. People go into a shop with a price in mind. They go, oh, it's nine ninety nine. That's how much they, they want to spend. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, there are um, um, there, there's definitely psychological techniques that but you can use. A lot of that stuff at Apple was about kind of helping people to get the right thing that they want. Yep. Maybe for selling computers, that's the sort of thing that's that you can do it like that because you know it's often a more complicated solution. Yeah. Um, what about Apple's uh, sort of marketing, the ah, way that Apple unbelievable uh, it sort of shows itself to the world. Yeah. How do they get? I mean, you know, how does their marketing work then? Do and they got, uh, they've. I mean, for me, they still nowadays it's still some of the strongest marketing that there is in terms of the adverts. Like they were the first company ever to have an advert for a product without the product in it. Which it was one the, was that? Uh, it was the original uh, Macintosh in 1984 mm-hmm. when uh, they had an advert that ran once on TV and it ran. Uh, during the Super Bowl in 1984, when um, basically it was a it was kind of a a, a play on George Orwell 1984, mm. where there's a bunch of people like robots sitting in, and there's a woman that runs in with a big sledgehammer, throws it against the screen, and there was a big text afterwards. It was like uh, the the end of the thing was like, we'll show you why 1984 won't be like 1984, um, and there was no sign of the product. The right. the, the product wasn't in the it here so. If you really want, if you want it to be, if you want to, if you want the exact description of what they do, or a description of, of a really well, uh, somebody who who puts it really well is a guy called Simon Sinek, yeah, um, who has a video. It's a TED talk from ages ago, from probably two thousand and six or seven, uh, and the talk is called Ah, uh, what's the? Uh, it start with the why. Okay. Yeah. And to sum up what apple does compared to other companies and why they do it better is they most he 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 goes on to say that um yeah he wrote a book basically about this whole thing and basically says that most companies um start with uh, it is the why what and how Mm -hmm. and he says that most companies they know what they do right they they sell computers right or they 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 sell scissors or whatever the thing is that they're selling that's what they do uh some companies know how they do that uh, because they make the best processor, because they make the best car, they make the best whatever. But a few companies know why they do what they do. And his whole thing, he com- he compares Apple to Martin Luther King to the Wright brothers, uh, uh, who all had the same uh, access to the same talent. Uh, Martin Luther King wasn't the other person, wasn't the only person who was fighting for civil rights, but why was it that he, in a world where there was no TV, no advertising, none of this stuff, managed to gather 250,000 people in the same spot? And it was because people buy what you, they buy why you do what you do, essentially. Mm. And so Apple would never, in an advert, if you watched Apple adverts today, there's no specs. Specs? Uh, specifications. There's right. no, like, buy this computer, uh, X Intel whatever processor. Do, 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 do. Yeah, exactly. Uh, get that. Thirty-two gigabytes of RAM. Like it's just you see the product and you see how it's used. Yeah, and that's what sells it. And and now you see the Samsungs and the other companies do doing the, same, the same adverts with some cool music. But also they're they're sort of selling a lifestyle, aren't they? A kind of an uncluttered, simple yet yeah. effective, efficient lifestyle. Yeah too or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I mean it's well. it's a, it was a, it, the design was very minimalistic thanks to Johnny Ive uh who was the designer uh since I think 92 or something mm-hmm. um when Steve Jobs came back. And anyway, it was just yeah, it was it they they I mean they're selling a, not even selling a lifestyle. They're just like here's what we believe. We believe that life should be easy that user interface should be intuitive that this that and the other this is what we believe. 
and here's our product that, right. that goes with it, essentially. Whereas, right. uh, I mean, it, it even, you know, you look, I, I, I still look at PCs now and I think, oh, I'm not even PCs, like this, this thing that you've got here, what's that? Is it's, that a, a, it's, it's a, a light, light, right? If you look at this light that's attached here, like there's these extra holes and extra bits of plastic <laughs> yeah. that don't, that so have got no reason. To describe this light, it looks a bit like a wide, a, a very small widescreen TV. It's a made in China LED video light that's supposed to give me more light when I do my videos. Yeah. On the on the one side it's just white plastic, but that's where the light comes from. And on the back, so there are various little buttons and plugs and, yeah. and knobs, but also extra perif- uh, peripheral designs. Yeah. That of like vents. I mean there's no there's no fan in there, so why are there vents? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And it, 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 you look at other uh, products. I mean, it's a, it's a similar thing with Tesla. You know, Tesla, the car company. Yeah. And you look at other cars, and Tesla. I mean, they they've often been described as the Apple of cars. Um, but there's just a, I think there's a a, a a a a very interesting design philosophy behind what Johnny Ive did, who was inspired by Braun, um, the German household uh-huh. ma- um, uh, house appliances. Uh, yeah. Uh, because it was very uh, minimalistic, and and the the. The, I can't remember the phrase exactly, but it's something to do with like it, it. It's 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 simple, but it's not easy, sort of thing. Like in the right. sense that, like you know, your iPhone has got two buttons, uh, but there's nothing extra. There's no extra design on. It. There's no extra holes or extra things on your on the Mac. You know, it's all rounded edges, and the, the mm. angle mm. of that is the same angle that's on the trackpad, which is the same angle that was on the iPod, which is the same angle that's on the iPhone. Yeah. Um, a certain consistent sort of minimalism. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's very interesting. Let me just ask you a couple of other questions on mm. this similar subject. Yeah. Do you have to sell anything in any way in your life now? Do you feel like you're applying any of the so-called rules of advertising and sales to yeah, what to, you're doing to now? Me, to myself. How? Like I'm selling myself when on you, stage. When you go on stage. Like w- 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 when I'm... I guess I'm kind of using what I learned at Apple ish uh, mm. to sell my show to be like, hey, come and watch my, come and give me money yeah. to watch me talk. But uh, so not, I'm not talking about when you're on stage and you're selling yourself to the audience. There. No, I mean like yeah. behind the scenes. Like so if I'm on social media, let's say you want to get punters into your room, yeah. you want to get people to come yeah. and see your show. Yeah. So what are the methods you're applying? to get people to come to see your show? Uh, well, it's a couple, it depends on, on, uh, <clears throat> depends on the situation. Like there's one way is by, uh, recording bits of my show uh-huh. and put that, putting that out on social media. Let me stop you right there. Yeah. So if you've recorded a clip yeah. from your Franglais show, yes. and you put it up on YouTube. Yes. How do you choose the title of the video? Uh, it's got to be nowadays the stuff that works is kind of a controversial title. For example, for example, uh, French people don't know how to count. Okay. Right? Yeah. Uh, which was one of my bits in my previous show, the fact that French people can't count. They say 15 days instead of 14. I've got some other bits around yeah. that idea of counting. Yeah. Uh, so, or, 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 uh, or uh, you know. <clears throat> uh, so, that's kind of like, I mean, it's a dirty word, but it's a, sort of a, applying the rules of clickbait, isn't it? A little bit, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's 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 a more shareable. I think what worked with with what the fuck was that the show was called what the fuck France. So straight away people were like, Oh, what's this bastard got to say about us? Yeah. And then eventually in the content, they were like, yeah, it's, it's, it's a fair point. Yeah. Um, but for specific, yeah, for titles, I mean, na- so now social media is very focused specifically like YouTube. Uh, you know, it's very s- focused on thumbnails and titles. Like you need to have a title before clickbaity titles would work, just clickbaitable titles, you know, that for were just example? like, Oh, um, uh, I opened this box and you'll never guess what happened next. Mm-hmm. That was a thing for a while. And now that's disappeared a little bit because often the content didn't match the title. Yeah. So now you've still got to find like a click, a clickable and shareable title uh, that will draw your attention, but the content matches, Yeah. Uh, you know, or like, you know, here's like, for example, if I said, um, uh, here's why kissing in France is a pain in the ass. You know, it's like, a, it's a shock title. Mm-hmm. And then it's me talking about the fact that to say hello. Uh, yeah, you've got to kiss in all these different ways. Yeah, so, and so that's, that's social media. Then there's uh, uh, advertising in the Metro. Like if I make a poster, uh-huh. the poster has got to be a, an enticing poster uh, for the show. The title of the show, uh, if it's in the Metro, you know, it's got to be like, oh, it's got to stand out uh, from all the other posters. Mm. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of sales and marketing that go on in comedy 
outside of it was the same thing with us when we did our show yeah uh sorry we're english the yeah. title is amazing uh Maybe less so in Tom, France. But- Tom Tom stayed, you know, the Canadian comedian. Yeah. When he was here and I told him about our show. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, it's called Sorry We're English. He was like, Sorry We're English. It should be called Fuck You We're English. <laughs> yeah, because that would be a good title as well. Fuck You We're English. And yeah. then the poster of me with a beer, you with a cup of tea, yeah. or I can't remember. Yeah, yeah, I had the tea, you had the beer. Yeah. And it just, it, it, the, it was a good, like, it was a good, mm-hmm. whereas most people who do 30 30 shows, like 30 minutes and 30 minutes, a lot of people do that when they don't have yet an hour. Yeah. hours worth of yeah. content they yeah. struggle to sell because it's just like oh 30 30 with these two unknown comedians yeah a lot of people came to our show because they thought we were on stage at the same time correct yeah that's um, because we're in france yeah and that's that's what happens in france yeah okay i mean we could talk more about clickbait and stuff i've got some examples of, mm. of clickbait i mean quickly yeah do that you know listeners those articles you see on the internet where they have a title like this man <laughs> tries to hug a wild lion you won't believe what happens next yeah accompanied by a picture of a man with a lion and stupid- yeah those kind of titles were good they were massive like three four yeah. years ago and now they've stopped a little bit see them less these days i mean when you when they have a list for example, and they, they, okay, 15 tweets that sum up married life perfectly. And then they say number 13 is hilarious. Yeah. And you have to check it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And each, every single reason is on a different page so they can put more advertising exactly. on it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's clickbait. All right. And so it's, for me, it's falls into the same kind of uh, area as advertising and well i mean it's it, i mean if you look at yeah i mean almost it's it, it that's exactly what it is if, if i look at my vlogs on youtube right um which most of which are behind the scenes of comedy what it's mm-hmm. like to be a comedian and in some of them the title it's all about the title and the, the actual production quality of the video is shite but it's the like the one of the, my most viewed videos is the title is just getting married in France. Yeah. Uh and there's a picture of you with a, your wedding suit on. Exactly. And that's that's my most viewed video on on my channel. Yeah. But the video is it's not great. I mean the video I mean it's not that amazing but it, people have clicked on it. This the, my other one is London versus Paris. Yeah. So clearly people like t- people type that in, you know. I think yeah. the thing on YouTube specifically with advertising that works is what's searchable you know what do people search for when they type in a video on youtube and they go you know it, often it's tips like 15 yeah. photography tips yeah, yeah, they yeah. get millions yeah. of views those kind of things similarly for for learners of english i mean like uh there are lots of youtube channels now that are doing very well getting lots of um views yeah for you know from learners of english and they could easily use lots of um clickbait things, like it's like you know learners british accent in these five simple steps exactly i learned nine languages in two months here's how yeah that um, kind of stuff yeah, yeah. like what well, the one one of them was that i got which is how to learn a language yeah uh, which is one of the top viewed videos that i have which is me on a beach in barcelona yeah. on my holiday it's good good video talking about the accent sort of thing i used that once in class Did my you? students didn't understand anything you said <laughs> but that, i mean that they were quite low level students right um i mean you see also this kind of use of language which uh is persuasive and stuff yeah. in very in other ways i mean more traditionally in advertising in shop windows and stuff yeah and you get things like you know books from two pounds mm-hmm now that's slightly misleading, you know. Big book sale, uh, books from two pounds. That means that there's maybe one or two books that are two pounds. Yeah, two pounds is the starting exactly. price. Yeah. The other books are probably more expensive. Yeah, and also massive discounts up to ninety percent off. Yeah, up to yeah yeah ninety yeah. percent off. There's one item that's got. Well, it was a, a, a similar thing when I we bought a car recently. Yes, uh, a mini, mm-hmm. and in the brochure. That they that mini give you the 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 model that I got, which is the Mini Cooper. There's like the Mini One, there's the Mini Cooper, and the Mini Cooper S. They're the three models yeah. that you can get. And the Mini Cooper uh, was uh, uh, something like from three hundred and thirty euros per month. Yes, it ends up being five hundred euros per month yeah. once you've added. Once it's like cool. Uh, well, yeah, I quite like CarPlay. I quite like my iPhone to be on mm-hmm. the thing with the Bluetooth. Cool, mm-hmm. that's an extra, however much it is. Yeah. The wheels, you know, the different rims. If you want the wheels to go around, you got to pay an extra hundred pounds a month. Exactly. If you want the automatic uh, gearbox instead of the manual gearbox, that's an extra couple of thousand. <sighs> right. So it's always from, but no, you never end up just with that model. Yeah. Yeah. 
or with that you never end up with just that from thing. 300 pounds it just basically means this is going to be more than 300 pounds mm-hmm. is what that means yeah exactly yeah. exactly and and the other thing is in advertising sometimes when it's large numbers when the prices are quite high so let's say it's 399 pounds they all say 399 yeah have you noticed that yeah yeah this three-piece living room suite now only three nine nine. Was seven nine nine now three nine nine? Like, like it's three hundred and ninety nine. Don't yeah. don't say three nine nine like that's going to trick me. Yeah, I don't know if that's. I mean, they, people still use that. Like that instead works. of saying four hundred, they say three. I don't know if that still works. I think people. I think that maybe worked initially for like a, a decade or two. Still doing it, man. When I they're watched, still doing it, but I don't know if it's if it's um, it must work. I don't know. Calling it three nine nine, so three hundred ninety nine and three hundred. That might maybe, but it, but it, it being. Th- Three ninety nine instead of four hundred. Still, definitely work. It must work. I don't know. I think it's old. I think it's old psychology. Mm. And people, are, people have just gone with it, and they're like, "Oh, because if you say it's three ninety nine, people psychologically will say that it's less than four hundred. I don't know if that's the case anymore. I think people are intelligent enough to just, but it's it's stayed. It's it's a it's, it's a just, technique. It's stayed. just with us now. We can't do anything about it, can yeah. we? Um, okay. Now, what I've got so. I don't know if you know this um, stand-up routine by George Carlin. You know who he is, obviously. Yeah, but I don't know a lot of his work, so I probably okay. don't know this bit. So, listeners, if you're not aware, George Carlin, uh, is uh, he was a great American stand-up comedian and one of the kind of the main guys, one of the, f- the grandfathers, of, not grandfathers, forefathers, yeah. one of the creators of stand-up as we know it today. Mm-hmm. Him and uh, uh, Richard Pryor, basically in the 70s, sort of just went off and did their own thing. And it was very much part of the counterculture movement that was going on in the late 60s and stuff. And they just, you know, uh, created a form of stand-up that so many other people have have, have followed Mm -hmm. ever since. So George Carlin is a huge figure in stand-up comedy, especially for the Americans. And especially as he got older, he became more and more angry Mm -hmm. and more and more disillusioned with... Uh, consumerist capitalist yeah. culture in America. Yeah, it, I mean, t- towards the end, some of the clips that I've heard, like it's not comedy; it's 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 preaching basically. He's ranting. He's ranting. He's uh, yeah. He's he's ranting, and it's it, and it's making a lot of sense. But there's there's not necessarily a lot of laughs, which is interesting. Um, so this is something called the advertising lullaby. Okay, this is from the advertising lullaby, which is a sort of a piece that he used to do. He called it a lullaby because that's what advertising is supposed to do. It's kind of supposed to lull you to sleep, is his his point of view. But anyway, in the advertising lullaby, I think it's amazing because he includes so many of those typical sales phrases that you've heard over the years in advertising and stuff like that. Almost every single one is put together in this incredible stream of consciousness monologue um in which he uses all of the phrases uh and maybe i have heard this one of the most amazing things for me is the way that he does it all from memory and it all flows so perfectly and fluidly all from memory so what we're going to do is we will listen to that but first i've actually got um a list of all the phrases that he uses okay so what we can do is go through the list of phrases there's Mm -hmm. quite a lot Mm. and very quickly we just need to say whether these things are positive or negative Mm -hmm. and then just on, what, on whose side on the and on, for a consumer from the consumer's point of view okay. are these phrases positive or negative for the sale yeah and maybe briefly why we might need to explain what they mean so we'll start with this one all sales are final all sales are final uh it's negative i'd say for the consumer because it means if you buy the thing then you can't return it exactly yeah and that's typically used in things like sort of um uh those those sales where they've got like b stock and they're trying to get rid of their stock. Yeah. So like clothing at the end, of, like a, at the end of the season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the end of a season, clothing might be sold off in a, a, a what do they, what do they call it? A uh, private sale or something like that. Yeah. And so all sales are final means that you can't come back and get a refund mm-hmm. or get a return. So it's kind of negative. All sales are final. Allow six weeks for delivery. Um, Basically negative. Yeah. It, I mean, it means that, I mean, six weeks is a long time for delivery. Yeah. It's going to take, Six weeks to be yeah. delivered. Allow six yeah. weeks for delivery. It might come negative. before, but... Uh... It probably is going to take six weeks. So yeah. that's, that's negative. Authentic. Authentic. I mean, like it, on the surface, it sounds positive. It does, doesn't it? If something is authentic, it means it's real. It's mm-hmm. true. It's the real thing. Mm. But the, the word authentic comes up 
everywhere. Yeah, yeah. I bought a pair of sh- uh, shorts, like yeah. cheap shorts. I was in Brighton doing the Fringe the Comedy Festival, and it was boiling hot. I needed to buy some shorts. I went into like a cheapo clothing shop, and I bought these shorts. And it was like, you know, sort of like those Gap, the Gap style khaki shorts or whatever. Yeah. And <clears throat> there are several labels on it. And one of the labels just said, authentic. That's it. I was like, oh, so the, they're definitely shorts. <laughs> You know, they're not fake. They're authentic shorts. <laughs> they're real. You know, an authentic you see written on pa- underpants, jeans, t-shirts. Yeah, everything is authentic now. Yeah, meaning it's real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But authentic shorts, like authentic yeah, leather. Of course, they're of course they're authentic shorts. Yeah. Um, no purchase necessary. Yeah, I never understood that. It's uh, that's normally I've I've only ever seen that when you like you enter a competition. Yeah, I remember. My first asking this question when I saw a packet of crisps in mm-hmm. England mm-hmm. and it was like a Walker's packet of crisps and you had to collect a certain amount of tokens or whatever that were inside the packets. There was like these yeah. things that you would that you would open up. Yeah. But it would say no purchase necessary and I never understood why. Yeah. There is a legal loophole. So yeah, if you buy like a packet of cereal yeah. and there's a competition on the back yeah. and there's a, a cut out there's a form that you need to fill in to win the competition. You have to cut it out yeah. and send it. And it says no purchase necessary. Yeah. So the, the thing is that um, it, there's a legal, there's a law which says that um, y- you can't ask people entering the competition to buy something as a means of entry. Right. Buying the thing can't be a condition of entering the competition. But it is. They should be. But yeah. What, but what are they pra- going to do? Pra- Go to the supermarket and cut it out with the scissors? Practically it is because you need to buy the thing in order to get the thing to do it. Exactly. Uh, but in theory, you'd be able to write off to the address without needing... And get a, a refund. I don't know. Just write off. Yeah, I don't know. Write, write yeah. off to the address that you've copied from the back of the packet. Yeah. But anyway, no purchase necessary. Oh, it's, it's supposed to be... I mean, it's written as a legal uh, yeah. loophole, but it's basically... Um, positive because it basically means you don't need to buy the product to enter the competition. Next one is batteries not included. Hey, classic. Batteries not included. That's the worst at Christmas. Yeah. That's the the classic thing of when you buy when your when your dad buys you a a robot toy for Christmas and the batteries are not included. Christmas right. day everything's shut so you can't play with your toy. So it's bad because there are no batteries. Yeah. Classic. Classic. This um, these classic denim jeans. Yeah, these you know buy our classic regular cut denim jeans yeah. now from just fourteen ninety nine a pair. Yeah. So classic is positive, right? It means yeah, like old but good. Yeah, yeah, convenient. It's Obviously good. positive, yeah. isn't it? It makes life easy. Mm. Economy is a word which probably suggests this you're going to be able to save money. Mm-hmm. Uh, custom so custom oh, custom made custom made yeah that's usually good positive because it yeah. means they've made it specifically for you uh-huh. deluxe <laughs> that's good it means it's kind of high quality yeah you would think design because well, i've just De- figured deluxe. i've just understood that that's from french yes deluxe of of luxury yes did you know i had the idea i realized recently that for french people when i tell them the name of my podcast they might get it wrong. They might think it's the luxury English podcast because the name of my podcast is Luke's English Podcast. Luke's, yeah, Luke's, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Luke's in French means luxury. Luxury. Uh-huh. So I sometimes <laughs> wonder if they think, oh, he's arrogant. Yeah. Listen to him calling his, call it the Luke's de English luxe, Podcast. Right. Deluxe. C'est une marque de luxe. It's a luxury brand. Deluxe then uh, basically uh, means, uh, wait a minute. Uh, yeah, high quality. Yeah, luxury quality. Yes. Next, 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 next. Uh, designer. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. It's been designed by someone. A designer, yeah. <laughs> but we associate it with... You would with, say, yeah, designer brands. Yeah. Like means like Chanel. Those French brands. Exactly, that, yeah. I have no time for. Each each item sold separately. I uh, mm. don't really know how that fits into something, but e- each, each item, item sold, sold separately... separately. Well, it just it's well, again- it means if they if they it, here's what it is, it would be the equivalent of right. having a having a photo of your iPhone, 
uh, of an iPhone on a coffee table with a case around it, uh, the charging cable and, a, and some wireless headphones all in yeah. the same thing. And then yeah. there'll be a little asterisk saying <laughs> each item sold separately, right. which means that you need to buy the phone, the case, the thing all different, all separately. Exactly. That if you don't, even though they've advertised it, it looks like you're buying yeah. all of that at the same time. And yeah. in fact, you have to buy them individually. Yeah, yeah. So it's going to be more expensive. Easy terms. Yeah, it means that the terms and conditions are easy, I guess. Yeah, that's right. Affordable prices. Yeah, that's good. It also means it's cheap. Experience. So mm. if you're talking about salespeople, yeah. then experience is obviously important because they know, if you know, talk to our experienced sales staff. Yeah. They'll help you find exactly the right yeah, product yeah. for you. Free installation. Yeah. Means they're going to install, it, install for free. it for free. Free admission. Oh, into it. Like, yeah. You can get in. Yeah. Admission, the admission price is the price to enter yeah. the thing. So free admission means you can enter free. Mm-hmm. Free appraisal. I don't know what that means. An appraisal is basically when someone um, establishes your needs or establish, establishes... Um, oh. So an appraisal at work uh, is a, when what your boss talks to you about... Yeah, about your, your strengths, appraisal. Your strengths yeah. and weaknesses. Performance appraisal. But um, an assessment performance assessment right would that so, be used for cars like if you get a free assessment free appraisal, uh, free appraisal free appraisal could be uh that someone will kind of uh assess your car and see whether yeah. how it's going free appraisal free alterations free alterations i wish i had that when i bought my levi's jeans the other day right i bought some levi's jeans and my legs are short uh, oh, yeah? i've got short legs so uh my actual jean size is 30 30 yeah uh 30 waist 30 length but all jeans are 32 if you're 30 waist or 31 waist or a 32 waist obligatory it's 32 length really? so i so i was in levi's uh, uniqlo do free what is it called alterations, free alterations. Uh, levi's 12 euros 12 euros so on top of the 110 euros that i spent on the jean i had to spend an extra 12 euros for them to cut off two inches oh my god bastards but, but uniqlo the japanese clothing store they yeah. do free alterations which is just as well because all of like they don't do 32 size at uniqlo length length no 34 it's only it? 34 yeah so if i ever buy trousers at uniqlo i have to have them altered yeah and you have to come back and it's really them. annoying yeah free delivery we understand free estimates an estimate is like when let's say you get someone to come and repaint your kitchen they'll come in they'll have a look at it go uh, oh basically what needs to be done here yeah is we need to paint over some of the cracks we have to knock that wall through <laughs> knock that wall through do a bit of soldering here and there yeah, uh, here's well, the estimate. Give you a free estimate. It's going to cost you, you know, nine hundred pounds or something. Free home trial. Ah, oh, means uh, that's a big thing with mattresses now. If you buy a new mattress, which we found out, yeah, because we bought a new mattress for the new house that we moved into, uh, you have a hundred nights for free to really? test it at home. Okay. Uh, and if you don't like it, you can take it back. But I mean, I don't know the logistics of... Neither do I. How do you send a mattress back? Does somebody collect it or do you have to go to the post office I think with, a, with a double, a king-size mattress? God knows. And pay the money to send it back? <laughs> no idea. Free returns? Don't know. Free home trial. So that's when you get to try the thing out at home. Yeah. Trial. Free free parking? We, we know, of course. No cash, no problem. Well, that's, that's easy. <laughs> yeah. Friend, friendly service. Yeah, we know genuine. Yeah, which is similar. Genuine to... Genuine leather. Yeah, genuine is a bit like the other word that we had, which is I've forgotten. Authentic. Authentic. That's a go. Imitation. Oh, that's the opposite. Imitation leather. Yeah, that means it's not leather, but it's made to look like leather. For all them vegans. So imitation could be good if it's cheaper, but um, or if it doesn't include animals, like imitation fur. Yeah. It make it means that you can buy a coat that has a fur hood to keep you warm, but if it's yeah. imitation, then it's it means we didn't kill coyotes. Exactly, an imitation leather belt is a belt that's not actually made of leather, but it's made to look like it. Gourmet, gourmet. That's a that's like deluxe for food. Yeah, and they use it a lot in America, don't uh, they? Like you know, gourmet coffee. Yeah. Well, we've stuff. got a, we've got there's a chain of restaurants. I don't know if they still exist in the UK called Gourmet Burger Kitchen (GBK). <laughs> Right, gourmet burger kitchen for your gourmet it's, burgers. It's basically a, a, a twelve pound uh, burger. Right, I bet it's not that good. No, high quality. High quality is obvious. Hospitality. Uh, yeah, that's more for I guess uh, 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 customer uh, relations and stuff. Um, the corporate, uh, yeah, like uh, oh, hotels. Yeah, uh, hospitality. You can buy hospitality packages. 
uh, if you go to I don't know if you go I, I, if you go on holiday somewhere you, if you get the hospitality package, you know it's like the the extra bit where you get welcomed and. Hospitality is basically the friendly and generous reception and, and entertainment of guests, visitors, or mm. strangers. What's weird is that the word hospital is in there, so that's interesting. I just realised that that the hospital, like where it, you go, is in. So they look after you, basically. Yeah. So you know, great hospitality at the hotel means that they're really looking after you. Yeah. Yeah. Low rates. Low rates normally for if you're taking a loan, if you're getting like a a, a credit card, low rates. Good, because we're talking about rates of... Interest. Interest. Uh, if you have to pay the money back, low rates of interest are good. Okay. Or low exchange rate, maybe. Mm-hmm. Leather. What's the difference between leather and leather style? Well, leather style is probably imitation leather, mm-hmm. and leather is probably genuine. For example, a lovely... Or as the Irish say, genuine. Do they? Yeah. <laughs> genuine. A leather style... I'm wa- genuinely surprised. Oh, yeah. Right. A leather style wallet would be a wallet that's not made of leather, but it looks like it. Yes. Okay. Limited time only. Uh, yeah, that's normally bad. Well, it's yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, it's normally bad in the sense it's like, hey, come and come and buy this product for for. for it used to be five ninety nine. Now it's three ninety nine for a limited time only. And it's it's one of those phrases that's used by salespeople to get people into the shops quicker to get that sense that you you know it's not going to last forever. Yeah. You have to buy it now. Yeah. Um, to avoid disappointment. Exactly. Limited time only. Mileage may vary. Uh, Which is a I, standard phrase, but it only refers to cars. Oh, yeah. It's probably to do with miles per gallon. Like it, when they announce a car and they, you sell a car or an advert, it'll say, oh, it does whatever it is, 400 miles per gallon. Okay. And then it says mileage may vary. That means that if you put your foot down and it'll, you know, if if you drive like an idiot, then you'll get less miles per gallon. Okay. You'll get less mileage. Okay. I think. Money back guarantee. It's positive. Money back guarantee. It's positive. Yeah. It's if you, if you don't like it, then you can get your money back. And that's guaranteed. Yeah. As well. Name brands. We've had, it's a bit like designer brands. Yeah. No down payment. Yeah. If you're buying... A car that's quite expensive, let's say it's twenty thousand. Uh, you can buy it on a if you buy it and you pay whatever it is per month. Like we were paying, you know, five hundred euros per month. Mm-hmm. You don't need a down payment, which means you don't need to put a bigger sum of money to guarantee. Which we did. We yeah. put it down. So we bought the mini. It's three hundred euros a month. It was either five hundred euros a month. Or 300. Or like, 300 well, with I'll, a down payment. Oh, I see. Uh, I thought it was like either 500 euros a month yeah, or 300, or 300 euros, euros a month. month. Ooh, ooh, that's yeah. a difficult <laughs> choice. Uh, I think we'll go for the 300 no, euros. We, it, so we went for 300 with a down payment because the people, because our comp, it's on the company and because the company has only been yeah. around for a year and a half. Yeah. They're not the, 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 the cash flow. Ah, the, not the leasing company. Mm. The people that gave us the loan were like, cool. We trust you paying back 300 a month. We don't have enough financials on your side to, for us to guarantee that you can pay back 500 a month. So we need a down payment to... I see. So it's more secure for them. Yeah. So you gave them a down payment. Yeah. But in some cases, there's no down payment necessary. They'll just accept the 500 euros a month or whatever for yeah. you. No entry fee. That is what she said. <laughs> An entry fee, obviously, is money you have to pay to get in. Yeah. That's like if we do free comedy shows. No entry fee. No entry fee. That's right. Free admission. Um, no fuss. Yeah, that's an interesting one. No fuss means no hassle, no... No inconvenient yeah. like stuff that you'd have to do. It's positive. Yeah, Just- yeah. it's like a no... It's I guess no fuss refund if you... It's like, hey, which is Apple's thing. You, you basically... You buy a thing. If you don't like it in 14 days, you can bring it back and there's no fuss. It is no like, oh, what's wrong? Oh, you've opened the box. Oh, you've... You, you don't have to sign any documents. There's no, no claims that you have to make. It's no. just simple. As long as it's in the same condition, you just go, I don't like it. And they go, okay, cool. Here's your money back. No hidden charges. No hidden charges. Um, That's good. Som- yeah, sometimes it's great. Sometimes you buy stuff and then there's hidden charges because uh, you didn't read the fine print. Like you've got to pay insurance or whatever. And it's like, oh, God hidden charges when you're buying plane tickets flight tickets there are oh, loads God. of hidden charges especially with the low cost airlines it's like hey Damn. fly to spain for 9.99 from 9.99 hidden charge of 30 euros for a baggage 30 euros to pay by card 30 euros just to be alive exactly final price 2000 euros uh next one is no no kidding which no. obviously we're serious yeah. no mess Same which thing. is a bit like no fuss 
No risk. No risk, we understand. No obligation. Yeah. So you're not tied into some kind of agreement. No payments or interest until September. Yeah. So if you pay now, you buy it now. You buy it now, you start paying in September. Start paying in September. We are in September. So that doesn't really work. No purchase necessary. We've had that. We've had that one. Uh, no one will call on you. I quite like that. Yeah. Meaning that uh, you won't get any hassle. There'll be yeah. no after sales yeah. shit where they're trying to... Hi, we're just uh, confirming that you enjoy our cousins. We noticed that you bought a, a, a Mini. and Would you be interested in oh, buying mate. any of our other small products? We might, both my car insurance. Uh, you, you just I did a... There's like the equivalent of Meerkats over here. Meerkats? Uh, well, me, well, me, Meerkat.com. Find the Meerkat.com. Yeah, uh, which is a... It's a, actually... It's a, you know what? It's actually... Sir, it's, is it Sergey. F- no, 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 wait. Is it find the, the, the market? It's comparethemarket.com. Comparethemarket.com. Okay. And they they advertised in the UK, ladies and gents, by using meerkats, which are these like... Uh, Russian... Siberian? Are they Siberian? Or Kazakhstan? I don't know. Um, they kind of speak with this uh, Russian... But here accent. they have the same thing, They call it, but they call it the ferrets. Lesfurets.com. The ferrets.com. Okay. So you go on there, you can pay your insurance, and then you go to the thing, and then if you, at any stage, click off of that... In within two hours, you get a phone call from the insurer being like, "Oh, we've noticed that you went online to look at our insurance. Would you be shut the fuck up?" <laughs> uh, no red tape. This is a good one. Yeah, red tape. I don't know where the expression comes from, but it generally means uh, like administration problems. Yeah, like uh, yeah, paperwork and mm. legal stuff. So red tape comes from the fact that back in the old days in the legal areas of London, and in fact still today. Uh, legal documents are bound together with red ribbons, red tape. Oh, okay. So uh, red tape is used to tie together pages of legal ad- Yes, okay, admin. yeah, because there's so many pages you can't just staple it. Yeah, so red tape now means bureaucracy, admin, paperwork. No red tape. Offer good while supplies last. That's another one of uh, limited time only. Yeah. Basically. So the sale, this discount is on while we have the supplies. Exactly. So it's a limited time only. Order today. So that's one of those phrases. Order today yeah. to avoid yeah, disappointment. Apple, Apple uses that. At the, oh. Like yesterday, they just announced all of their new stuff. And it was like, you can order from today. Order now. Order today. Yeah. Ships next week. It's kind of a sales phrase. Performance. So, you know, a performance vehicle. Mm-hmm. Like a, a performance car. Yeah, it is, performs. It, yeah. But well, it's also it does. considered to be high performance. <laughs> yeah. Like a performance sports car, you yeah. imagine, is like very well-tuned yeah, yeah, yeah. and really, really high performance. Yeah. Premium. Yeah. Well, of course, it's used by everybody, meaning uh, top quality. Yeah. Prestige. Ooh. Oh, one of the things that made me laugh, I mean, it's in a similar vein, mm. is um, a phrase in Bad Boys 1, the film with Will Smith and yeah. Martin Lawrence. Yeah. In the first scene of the first film, they're driving in... Will Smith's character's uh, Mike Lowry, uh, his Porsche, mm-hmm. and Martin Lawrence is eating McDonald's or fast food in the passenger seat. Right. And Will Smith's character's like, dude, stop eating fucking McDonald's in here. Uh, you're going to spill it all over the place. And Martin Lawrence is like, yeah, well, have you got? A, is there a cup holder that I can put my cup? And um, <laughs> Will Smith's like, dude, this is a limited edition fucking Porsche. And Martin Lawrence is like, yeah, damn right, it's a limited edition. It doesn't have a fucking cup holder. <laughs> Very limited. <laughs> exactly. And there's that double sense of what limited edition means. Limited right. edition usually means that it's, you know, uh, a sp- Special edition of the. There's thing. only a few of them that were that were made. Exactly, but limited could also mean that there are there are lots of limitations. Yeah, like if you describe a person as being limited, like I don't think we should give Paul the uh, the, the 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 new job. But well, it's he's a just, bit limited. He's just a bit limited in, in that area. <laughs> Meaning, uh, imagine skills Paul are limited. Is, Paul is like some sort of idiot. Uh, uh, uh. What's two plus two? He's just a bit limited, isn't oh, he, Paul? A bit limited. Okay. Prestige, though. Respect and admiration given to someone or something, usually because of a reputation for high quality, success, or social influence. Yeah. So someone of very high social standing. One of my favourite films is called The Prestige. Yeah. Chris- Christopher Nolan. Christopher Nolan with uh, Christian Bale. Christian and uh, Bale. what's his name? Hugh Jackman. Hugh Ackman. <laughs> and uh, Scarlett Johansson. As well, isn't is she? she? Oh, yeah, she might she be. Is. And uh, who else is in that? Dave, Mike okay. David Bowie is in there as well. Oh, he is. Playing the Tesla. part of N- Nikola Tesla. Yeah. And it's Michael Caine. Like, Michael Caine is and in Michael every, Caine. Chris, every Chris Nolan film is Michael Caine. What, what does he do in that? Is he, he? It sounds like it could be 
uh, a sort of a, an Oko Alfred he is basically, character. Yeah, he's basically. I think he. I, I, I think he is like. Uh, fuck. What's the word in English? Conseiller. Uh, advisor. He's advisor. Uh, he's uh, uh, what uh, Christian Bale's advisor. Really, it's the same. They're playing same, the same, same role. Exact same yeah. role. Um, you know what? Did you know this? That uh, uh, recently I was teaching, and no one knew who Michael Caine was. I was teaching a class of students, um, and n- Michael Caine ca- <laughs> came 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 up. I probably made an ass of myself. Probably doing my Michael Caine impression, and so they all looked at me, and I was like Michael Caine, and oh they were like, uh, huh? I was like Michael Caine, Michael Caine, and um, I ended up showing them a photo of him. On the yeah. on the whiteboard, and they were like, "We don't know who he is." Like, you don't know who he is. Get out! You're all fail. You're all yeah. yeah you're failed. all fail the class for not uh, knowing. Unbelievable, it's amazing, isn't it? It's like if it's teaching French and be like Gerard Depardieu, like, uh, who? Marion Cotillard. No, don't know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Anyway, prestige, yeah. uh, quality, quality, we, mate. We, we know savings is a, is interesting because. They often talk about savings when they're trying to make you pay. When they're trying to make you buy something, mm. they talk about how much money you're going to save. Yeah, it's like you know, like my wife says that to me. She she's like, "Oh, I bought this dress. It was three hundred pounds, but I bought it for seventy. Yeah, I saved two hundred thirty. No, no, you, you didn't. didn't. You spent you seventy. S- you just lost seventy pounds. Exactly. You didn't save, especially money. if it's like buy two for the price of one and a half. You know, it's like, oh, you know, I bought I bought the you know. The, the I I bought this brand of biscuits because it, they were on they were you, you were, were going to save well no because we weren't you weren't going to buy them anyway right you just bought them because they were on yeah on offer yeah so it's like setting an arbitrary price and then setting a new price and convincing us that we've made money or somehow saved exactly. money yeah. it was like you made up the fucking price in the first place yeah and now you're trying to convince me that I've saved money by not paying the arbitrary price you came up with in the first place have you ever seen do you know adam and joe i think you are vaguely aware adam buxton yes yeah yeah. and joe cornish they used to be a double act and they used to do a tv show and there's one very funny sketch that they did where they're going around a shop somewhere in london and they're like opening all the packets of like sweets and crisps and ribena and stuff and they're like taking the fi- the free 15 percent because you know like you know yeah. ribena like soft drinks so they'll be like you know now with 15 percent extra free yeah and so like they're they're drinking 15 percent of the drink there and the guys are like what are you doing like yeah. we're just you know it's free isn't it it said look it says free That's and amazing. they're taking all the free stuff That's funny. <laughs> it's really good um s- uh select Select like these this select Italian uh, watch straps. Yeah, it's another bullshit. Yeah, phrase for nothing. They've been like carefully selected, uh-huh. handpicked. Yeah, S- uh, selection we know is a, a choice. Uh, uh, send no money. I, d- I don't know quite how that would work. Mm. Probably get rid of that one. Service. So we've talked about yeah, customer service. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. So act now. Yeah. Meaning, like, you know, buy, yeah. buy now to avoid disappointment. Some assembly required. Yeah, that sounds like a an advert for a toy. If yes. you have a toy that's like a, a Lego and it's advertising, oh, the Lego Millennium Falcon. Some and then of, at the bottom it would read, some assembly required. Well, no, it would be a no. product that shouldn't really, you shouldn't need to assemble yourself. Oh. So it's like, you know, this new, um, uh, what would it be? This new oven. Mm-hmm. Buy this new authentic, uh, um, genuine, genuine select uh, prestige oven, deluxe oven. Uh, asterisk <laughs> some assembly required. So yeah. you kind of need to build the oven yeah, yourself, yeah, yeah. which you shouldn't really need to do. Another one is uh, um, some items not available. Well, it's that's, yeah. that's clear. Some restrictions may apply. Oh yeah, that's often where I, I see that all the time on. Um, on like mobile phone um, contracts, contracts where it's like, hey, free international calls. Some, Some restrictions, restrictions may apply, yeah. which means you can't use this phone in the UK exactly. after the thirty first of October. <laughs> <laughs> what about this one? Some I- um, contents may have settled during transit. Oh yeah, that's um, that's on food, uh, where if you 
uh, I can uh, the thing that comes to mind is a package of cereal. Yes. So you've got a packet of cereal and you open the packet when you get home, half of it's empty mm-hmm. because I'm sure at the factory it was it was filled up, but then in transit when you shake it, you know, the cereal breaks apart and that's yeah. why you always end up with little tiny bits of cereal at the bottom uh, when you finish with the packet. But, um, I mean, I think it's misleading, really. What what contents may have settled during transit for me means is the box is this big, but the actual contents is this, is yeah. this big. You get, you get like 60% totally. of what you expect you're going to get because contents may have settled during transit. Are you trying to convince me that that <laughs> pack of cornflakes was completely full to the brim in the factory? I don't think so, somehow. There was, uh, oh, there was something I was going to get on, on, often on Apple adverts. Um, when they uh, like shot on on an iPhone, yeah, uh, there's like a film that's been shot on an iPhone. An amazing photo in a massive poster in the center of the city. And it's no, in, that's uh, usually all right. And it's a shot on an iPhone. Yeah, that, they're, they're okay. They're, 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 they're normally legit. okay, but there's, it's more the videos. Like when they show off the video capability, I was trying to find it at the bottom. They say like additional uh, additional accessories and applications used. May so, have been used or used. Yeah. You, like because they've got an extra lens on the camera and they've used like an editing app that's not with the iPhone. So they put right, that kind of stuff. Right, I see. But um, yeah, like when you see on the website where it's like, Pro the, and the, the the new iPhone 11 Pro, you know the, that con- that has connotations of like it's better. Do you know what I mean? Because it's yeah. the Pro. Um, yeah. But yeah, Apple's Apple has all sorts of stuff like that where it says that last chance to save on a Mac. Um, uh, and then, save up to two hundred dollars. Right, right. Save up to two hundred dollars. That's great. Yeah, on a Mac with education pricing, like if you. If you buy a Mac for college, you get up to two hundred dollars, uh, and lots of lots of re- references to power. Yeah, believing yes, because that's all the pro stuff. Believing is seeing. Yeah. They're quite power good with their taglines. Power of Mac, the power of Mac taken further. Get up to fourteen thousand, uh, fourteen hundred dollars towards a new Mac. Yeah, with trade in, just give us your eligible Mac. You, you know. Yeah, well, you know, a lot of this language actually free works. delivery and free returns. So. We've just basically got the word style and value, which, I mean, style we know, value means that it's like a good value, yeah. meaning that the, 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 it, the price is pretty low for yeah. the quality. And then we've got the phrase, two to a customer, which suggests that... Uh, uh, that's, that's a very Apple thing. Is it? Yeah, when a new iPhone gets released, mm-hmm. it's two to a customer. So you can't buy more than two iPhones when a new one comes out because there was a big problem. I think it was when the iPhone 4 came out, there was a massive reseller problem because it was only available in certain countries to start with, notably not China and not Russia. Ah. Uh, Apple stores that were selling iPhones on launch day weren't filled. The queues weren't full of actual people who wanted to buy iPhones for themselves and fanboys and stuff. It was Mm. filled with Russian resellers and Chinese resellers who would just come in and buy like 50 or 100 iPhones to then resell them for right. twice the price in the countries that they weren't available. Yeah. So then very quickly they installed a two per customer. Right. And so now right. what they do is they just pay dudes 50 euros. Like, hey, I'm going to pay you 50 euros. You sit in the queue and buy two iPhones. You pay you 50 euros. And because they make yeah. about 500 euros per phone, right. the 50 euros that they pay that guy to stand yeah. in the queue, it's unreal. Amazing. Yeah. Um, so that's the list of phrases. That's a fucking long list. That is a long list. Now, as I said before, so this is this all comes from George Carlin's uh, routine, which is about two minutes long. Right. And uh, I think I and now that you've we've yeah. gone through the words, I remember the bit. You I do. don't remember it, but I remember. I know that I've seen it before. Yeah. So I I really really like this. And as I said before, one of the impressive things about it is the way he remembers mm. the entire thing and does it flawlessly. But listeners, I should say there is some very rude language at the end i think i'm going to play it i was thinking of cutting it off yeah but i actually feel like cutting off the rude ending sort of um doesn't really do the the, the routine justice. justice yeah so i've made a decision listeners to I, keep uh, the last bit in I but like it's the youtube warning warning this cor- clip con- this this clip contains coarse language viewer discretion advised so i'm saying that to you too listeners there's some very rude content at the end of this routine so just about probably about two and a half minutes uh, into oh, it. they're used to rude language. But they don't mind. You can handle it, can't you, folks? They You're all adults. fucking love it. All right, then. So <laughs> here is George Carlin. And listeners, you can watch out for all of those different things that we've just been through and just enjoy the uh, amazing, impressive bit of stand-up that is George Carlin's advertising lullaby. Here we go. Yeah. 
September. But limited time only though, so act now, order today, send no money, offer good while supplies last, two to a customer, each item sold separately, batteries not included, mileage may vary, all sales are final, allow six weeks for delivery, some items not available, some assembly required, some restrictions may apply. So come on in. Come on in. Come on in for a free demonstration and a free consultation with our friendly professional staff. Our experienced and knowledgeable sales representatives will help you make a selection that's just right for you and just right for your budget. And say, don't forget to pick up your free gift, a classic, deluxe, custom designer, luxury, prestige, high quality, premium, select, gourmet, pocket pencil sharpener. <laughs> Yours for the asking, no purchase necessary. It's our way of saying thank you. And if you Act now will include an extra added free complimentary bonus gift, a classic deluxe custom designer luxury prestige high quality premium select gourmet combination key ring magnifying glass and garden hose in a genuine imitation leather style carrying case with authentic vinyl trim. Yours for the asking, no purchase necessary, it's our way of saying thank you. Actually, it's our way of saying, bend over just a little bit farther so we can stick this big advertising dick up your ass a little bit deeper. A little bit deeper. A little bit deeper. You miserable, no good fucking consumer asshole. <laughs> All right. Great. So... Uh, do you agree just at the end here do you agree with that with that idea that basically advertising is a bad is a force for bad in the world or or not is it not as simple as that do you reckon i i get annoyed and frustrated every day by marketing and advertising yeah totally drives me nuts but do you think that it's 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 sort of i feel like it's i don't know how products would like in terms of advertising um, I, th- I guess it performs well, an I important think, I, function. I think it does for because, companies. yeah, I think it does as well, and for consumers because you don't necessarily know. I think ah, the 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 advantage is there's certain things that I wouldn't know about had I not seen the advert or had I not seen you know mm. been um, exposed to the adverts of it, you know. But for me, I just hate the way in which I know instantly as soon as I'm being exposed to the advertising, the marketing, that psychologically I'm I'm being attacked from all sides sort of you know yeah that, like certain certain things about what make me human will make me interact with that advertising in a certain way yeah. that i'm being psychologically manipulated yeah yeah totally i really hate that and the other thing yeah. i don't like about advertising is that advertising is everywhere it's very pervasive like mm-hmm. if you walk down the street yeah you get exposed to all these advertising images yeah. everywhere yeah uh which is kind of unfair because that's a public space and these these companies are using these public spaces to kind of attack us whereas if if someone has graffitied a mural on the wall mm-hmm. that's illegal yeah you know yeah yeah it's just interesting to me that's like a, a, a graffitied mural on the wall yeah is considered to be illegal, but like advertising, it's totally fine. But it's- yeah, I like. I, I mean, I, I I think it's good when when adverts end up being funny and they end up making you laugh or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that can be fun. I think because, so too. I mean, again, psycho- psych- psychologically, they're potentially, you know, getting you to buy stuff or whatever. But it depends. It depends if they're well made and they're they, like I. There's some adverts that I appreciate. I remember there was a period in the UK, probably about mm. two thousand four five where my mum and I, when we watched TV at home together, we would almost love watching the ads because they were so funny. Yeah, whether so it was magical. for alcohol, um, mm. whether it was for uh, cars, whatever it was, there's some adverts that are really good. Like Guinness yeah. adverts are always amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, definitely. Or were always amazing. Some adverts are definitely great. Mm. 
and uh, some great people have done adverts, you know, like Martin Scorsese and yeah. other directors and stuff. Yes, uh, Spike Lee. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, it has its place. And I'm, I'm quite happy to sort of make fun of it when I see fit and just generally be a bit pissed off. But I can imagine also that it would be hard for the world to go around to an yeah. extent without, without all this stuff being there. You just need to be able to... You need to be able to sort of be critical about what you see and read as mm. usual, don't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think we need to hold on there. We need to stop there, in fact. All right. Um, so thank you very much, listeners. Thank you, Paul, for, oh. for being on the podcast again. Yeah, it's a good one. Advertising. Advertising sale. shit. Yeah. Yeah, mate. Do you want to do any advertising? Yeah, come podcast? and see the show, people. Uh <laughs> Uh, act now to avoid disappointment act now to avoid that's what we often do in comedy it's like oh there's only a few tickets left buy now and there's loads of tickets left come to left. see Paul Taylor's uh, authentic new uh, comedy show get your uh, tickets now before they run out go and see some classic uh, English stand-up comedy in a very convenient comfortable uh, theatre space this get uh, your di- premium prestige quality seats this deluxe designer made uh, show has been uh, uh, specifically put together in order to make uh, audiences of people laugh. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> just come to the show. All right. It'll be funny. Oh, well, my. What are the details uh, of the new show? The details of the new show. The show is called So British ou Presque. Uh, Which is like So British almost. almost. Yeah. Uh, because I talk about uh, my life in France still and the fact that I've been here for 10 years and I feel less British than I used to. And the fact you've failed citizenship tests. I, fa- I haven't talked about that. That's in my list, but I still did. I didn't manage You'll to do there. that. You'll get there. You'll get there. I'll get there. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's a, it's a show that's in both languages still because that worked uh, as a marketing oh, tool yes. at, for the first one. Yeah. It, it, got, it was so unique that people were like, oh, I've got to see this. So I was like, fuck it, I'll do it again. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, it's uh, for now it's in Paris, October to December. Uh, on tour where uh, where in a place called The Flow but no one's in Paris that you listen some to some of them are some of them are not. yeah uh, it's true there's, there's a couple of them <laughs> it's true Chris Benitez uh, makes his way over to the show there's more there are more uh, lepsters in Paris than than you might think okay they're, they're, well everyone in Paris injury. come and see the show at The Flow it's a boat next to Alexander Third Bridge so proper tourist central uh, it's uh, Friday Saturday Sundays details on my website starting in october starting mid-october to december and then in january well next year is basically the tour so uh france and international so i'll be coming to a country or a city near you where there's some french speakers so uh mainly the big cities across the world so london definitely uh new york la chicago the u.s some cities in canada shanghai hong kong yeah uh, dubai you're gonna go to russia uh no I have. There's no plans for Russia yet. Okay. Because uh, I don't know that there's many French people in Russia. Mm. Mm. Um, Not sure. But either. if there's enough French people in Russia, let me know. Send me emails, and we'll we'll see what we can do. What about South America? You're going to go to? No, Brazil? we ha- no, not yet. But that's a big country. But I I I I don't know if we'll have the time. Uh, okay. But that will be on the list at some stage. Japan, to get down there. Japan, yes, Tokyo. Yeah, really? Probably. Well, yeah, I'd like to go. It's nothing's booked because we're currently calling up all the people to book them. But yeah, Tokyo, Bangkok, Singapore, Spain. Yeah, Madrid, Barcelona. Nice. Turkey. No, not many French people there, I suppose. <sighs> there might be, but it's not. <clears throat> basically, I looked up the top ten or the top cities where French people expats are, mm-hmm. and just went th- through that. Poland. No, any fr- no French people there. There might be, but. Okay. Not that, not 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 enough. Maybe that would come and see the show. Go to PaulTaylorComedy.com for all the information, folks. And, uh, <laughs> thanks again for listening to another episode of uh, Luke's English Podcast. Uh, it's now time to uh, hand over to the Drive Time Show with uh, <laughs> with uh, Paul Taylor. So, uh, what do you got in store for us today, Paul? Thanks, Luke. Thanks very much today. Welcome to the Drive Time Show. Uh, on the show today, lots of great music, new sounds from Coldplay and Adele making a comeback. Uh, but before, uh, over to the news well in a minute before we go to the news we need to um just go straight to a piece of music do we no <laughs> i was tr- i was trying to get the music in there in time to be able to do this but i need i need to find like a good uh news coming up in five okay. minutes so before new- that we'll have a traffic info but just before the traffic info time to hear a new song and this is the police with every breath you take Ha <laughs> 
I'd love to be a, 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 a drive time radio yeah, you, DJ. You, you'd do it really well as I well. I would absolutely love to do that. Paul, thanks again for coming on the show. Cheers, mate. And uh, we'll have you and Amber back soon. All right. All right. See you later. Cheers. Bye. 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 bye, bye. So that was sales and advertising with Paul. As usual, let me know your thoughts relating to this episode. Here are some questions that you could consider. So what do you think of sales and advertising? Do you work in sales? Have you noticed any particular techniques or use of language that helps you sell things? What do you think of adverts on TV or the way that things are promoted to you on the internet? How do you feel about clickbait? Do you ever click on those articles? Do you think graffiti is okay in public places? How is that different to advertising in the sense that we don't get any choice over what is displayed to us in public? What about drawing graffiti on advertising that's in public spaces? The subject of sales, advertising and marketing is a big one and I expect to come back to it on the podcast at some point because there's loads of things that we could do with that. Business English is always something that I've saved and never done on the podcast. I was always planning to do a separate Business English podcast or a Business English course, but without calling it a Business English course, because people don't seem to like the word business. It sounds all heavy and dark, like the dark side or the Death Star or something, you know, you know, like kind of um, like business English, you know, that sort of atmosphere. Uh, But English in professional situations, it's really interesting. And I'm talking about things like how we negotiate, how we deal with being diplomatic in meetings, how we do presentations and socialise with people. Uh, I was actually working on a business English course and have loads of unfinished material for it. I must go back to that. But um, in the meantime, I might dip into some more businessy subjects in the future. We will see. But let me know about your interest in business English and if you'd like to learn the ways of the dark side and fulfill your destiny and all that stuff. But for now, it's pretty much time for the end of the episode. Thank you for listening as usual. If the spirit moves you, you could leave me a lovely, lovely review on iTunes or Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. Getting positive reviews helps to promote my podcast on those platforms. It's more likely to end up in the recommended selections and things like that. So it helps the podcast a great deal. Otherwise, you can always donate with one of the yellow PayPal buttons. You can sign up to uh, LEP Premium at teacherluke.co.uk slash premium. And check out my sponsors, italki at teacherluke.co.uk slash talk. You've been listening to Luke's English Podcast. And until next time, goodbye. Bye, 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 bye. Thanks for listening to Luke's English Podcast. For more information, visit teacherluke.co.uk.